Hi, in this video we're going to look at the topic of upper and lower bounds. It's a higher GCSE topic and is normally on a calculate paper, but there's a chance it could be on a non-calculate paper as well. What we're going to look at in this video is to be able to calculate the simple upper and lower bounds. Also be able to use the upper and lower bounds once we've, calc once we've found them in calculations. And the calculations could be add, take, times or divide. I'm not going to do all four in this video, but I'll give you examples of each style. Um, and then finally we're going to be able to solve some functional style questions. You'll notice that when you've been doing um, mock exams and past papers that the questions are becoming more and more wordy, more functional, and this is a particular topic that will appear in one of these wordy sorts of questions. Okay, so when we're talking about upper and lower bounds, let's see if we can define what it is that we're talking about. In this example, it says the diameter of a children's roundabout is 272 centimetres to the nearest centimetre. So it's been rounded to the nearest centimetre. What are the lower and upper bounds of the diameter? Okay, this is quite a straightforward question if we know what it is that we're being asked to do. Well, let's have a look. We've got 272 centimetres but it says it's been rounded to the nearest centimetre. Now, with any question like this, what it's been rounded to is the key. This part, the nearest centimetre part, this is the most important part of this question. So it's 272 centimetres to the nearest centimetre. What we do with any upper and lower bounds question is we see what it's been rounded to, in this case to the nearest centimetre, and we decide we're going to half that. So whatever it's been rounded to, we're going to half it. In this case, half of a centimetre is 0 0.5 centimetres. The upper bound, therefore, so the upper bound is 272 centimetres plus 0.5, which gives us 272.5 centimetres. It could have been 272.5 at the biggest, and the lowest bound, or the smallest it could have been, would have been 272 minus 0.5, which is 271.5 centimetres. We've got our biggest value it could have been, and our smallest value it could have been. Now, I know that sometimes when we're doing this topic, it looks like there's more to it. It looks like we should be looking at 272.4999 or some other kind of rounding, but we don't need to worry about it. We just half what it's been rounded to and add or take, depending if we're trying to find the upper or the lowest or the lower bound. Let's have a look at another example here. In example two, it says Mike has measured his rectangular lawn. The length is 13 metres and the width is 7 metres. So 13 metres and 7 metres. Both measurements are correct to the nearest metre. OK, calculate the upper bound for the area of the lawn. Well, this time I'm going to take the length and think, well, it was 13. The upper bound, so U, B would be well, it was right to the nearest meter so nearest meter means I need to add and take half a meter so the upper bound looks a little bit like a u and a v let's just rub that out make it a u upper bound would be 13.5 and the lower bound would have been 12.5 Next, we need to look at the width. That was 7. So its upper bound would be 7.5. And the lower bound would be 6.5. Now, the question says, calculate the upper bound for the area of the lawn. We're looking for the upper bound. Now, with these figures, with add and multiply in particular, so when I'm adding or I'm multiplying, we can see that we need the largest figures. I need the biggest figure for this, for the uh, length, and I need the biggest one for the width. 
So in this case, the biggest area would have been 13.5 multiplied by 7.5. And that, if I do that on my calculator, is going to give me an answer of 101.25, and we're in metres, and it's an area question, so metres squared. So the largest it would have been was 101.25. Notice I've still calculated my upper and lower bound, upper and lower bound for each of the length and the width, just in case I needed them. That idea comes in handy when we're having calculations to do with smallest things, or we're not quite sure if we're going to be using which values we're going to be using. Let's take a look here. Sally has a shelf which is 250 centimetres long, correct to the nearest centimetre. So 250 to the nearest centimetre. She cuts off a piece which is 75 centimetres long to the nearest centimetre. What's the smallest length the remaining piece of the shelf could be? And again, I'm looking for smallest length the remainder could be. Okay, well, I'm going to end up doing a takeaway. I know that, but what values am I going to end up taking away? Well, let's have a look. Let's take 250 and calculate the upper bound and the lower bound. Upper bound, in this case, nearest centimetre, so we're adding 0.5, so add and take 0.5 here, and again, add and take 0.5 for this one. So here we've got 250.5, and the lower bound would be 249.5, and for the other piece, 75, the upper bound would be 75 plus 0.5, and the lower bound, 75 minus 0.5, so 74.9. Now, the calculations I'm looking for is the smallest length, the remaining piece. So, let's have a think. If I'm not sure what to do, what I would say to you in an exam is do every single calculation. So, why don't we do 250.5 take away 75.5? We could also do 250.5 take away 74.9. We could do 249.5 take away 75.5. And we could do 249.5 take away 74.5. I've just noticed I've made a mistake over here. Okay, I'm just going to rub this out. I apologise. That should obviously be 74.5 down there. Okay, well done if you spotted that in the video. Okay, let's do some of these sums then. So let's get our, our answers. Okay, and so on our calculator here, we've got 175 centimetres for this one. Next, we've got 250.5 minus 74.5. Done it again. Look, I've put 0.9 there. There we go. So that's 176. And next we've got 249.5, 249.5 minus 75.5, which gives me 174. And finally, I've got 249.5 minus 74.5, which gives me 175. Now we can see here that. The lowest one is this one. It turns out it's the smallest of the length here. Take away the largest of the bit that's been cut off. So it's the smallest, take the largest. If this isn't obvious to you, don't stress about it in the exam. Just do every single calculation and check as you go through. You can see that I've made a couple of mistakes here, which were really easy mistakes, very, very simple mistakes that were made. I ended up making silly mistakes by writing a 0.9 down there, when obviously it should have been 0.5. Okay, so take time, take, be patient, go through it in a nice systematic way, read the question carefully and have a look. Okay, here's one that you can have a go at by yourself. Pause the video and I'll show you what to do in a second. Okay, so this time it says when she was born, Daisy weighed three kilograms, correct, to the nearest kilogram. So straight away I'm going to start writing things down. So three 
kilograms to the nearest kilogram. She could have been the upper bound 3.5 and the lower bound could have been 2.5. Okay, when she was three months old, Daisy weighed six kilograms to the nearest kilogram. So six kilograms, the upper bound could have been 6.5 and the lower bound could have been 5.5. What is the most weight she could have gained? So the most weight she could have gained would have been from here up to here. So the most weight she could have gained would have been adding on four kilograms. If you worked every single sum out in order to work to get this final answer of four, well done. It doesn't make any difference. You're not going to lose any marks for doing it. All you've lost is a little bit of time, but better to pick up the marks rather than dropping them. So if you're making revision cards, this is the last part. Uh, the key parts to this then, half the value that it's been rounded to. In these questions, I've only shown you when they've been rounded to kilograms or to centimetres, but equally it could have been to uh, two decimal places, in which case you need to... to half that so we're going to do it to three decimal places add and subtract from there okay so we're adding and subtracting making sure that we've got the figure that we're trying to round to if you're not sure then work out the upper bound and lower bound for each of your values so for value one upper bound and lower bound for value two, and do the calculations. You'll end up doing four calculations, but that's okay. It's particularly useful to do the calculations when you're doing a divide, because these ones are not always intuitive to do. Okay, hope this has been useful. Good luck with any exams you've got coming up, and look out for future videos soon.